Hello and welcome back to Manifolds. And of course, as always, first I want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, via PayPal or by other means. Now in today's part 4 we will talk about some examples for topological spaces and the quotient topology. Indeed, the quotient topology is a very important construction for topological spaces. Now you will see that we immediately need it for something we call a projective space. And the notation I use for this is Pn of R. It stands for the set of one-dimensional subspaces of Rn plus 1. Therefore, roughly speaking, we put lines into a set. So maybe we should visualize this in the case n is equal to 1. Hence, we take R2 and look at the one-dimensional subspaces in it. In other words, we have to look at all the lines that go through the origin. Therefore, each direction we have here gives us an element in P and R. Now I show you soon how we formally do this, but you should see we don't have any problems defining this set. However, of course you know, we also want a topology on this set. Now the question is, which one should it be and how do we define it? Obviously, this topology here should have something to do with the original topology on Rn plus 1. So you see, this is a general problem. How do topologies induce new topologies? Indeed, this question leads us to the notion of a quotient topology. So maybe it sounds complicated, but you will see it's a very natural construction. We just need two ingredients. First, a topological space given by a set X and a topology T. And in addition, we need an equivalence relation on X denoted with a tilde. Here you should know, an equivalence relation is a relation on X that is reflexive, symmetric and transitive. Ok, I would say I quickly explain the three terms here. First, reflexive means each point X is equivalent to itself. Then, symmetric means it does not matter in which order we read the equivalence. Hence, if X is equivalent to Y, we also have Y is equivalent to X. And finally, transitive means when we look at two equivalences, so x is equivalent to y and y is equivalent to z, then this implies x is equivalent to z as well. Ok, so an object with these three properties we call an equivalence relation on x. And indeed, we often have such a thing, for example for the projective space, you can immediately think of a suitable equivalence relation we need to define the lines. And this leads us immediately to the notion of equivalence classes. Such an equivalence class of an element X is always a subset of the set capital X. And usually it's denoted by brackets where we put the equivalence class tilde in the index. Now you should imagine this as the box with label X where we put in all elements Y that are equivalent to X. Hence, in the end, we get a lot of boxes here that decompose the original set X. And please note here, the topology T is not involved yet. Ok, what we can do now is to put all these boxes here into a new set. This is the set of all equivalence classes and denoted by X modulo tilde. Indeed, this abstract construction we use very often in mathematics. However, especially in the field of topology, this is an important construction because it explains how we can deform topological spaces. You will see this immediately in the next example. Now I can tell you, some people call this set the quotient set X by the equivalence class tilde. However, you already know we are not interested in the set itself, but in the set together with a topology. And now the question remains. How do we define a new topology here? Indeed, in order to do this, we need the so-called quotient map Q that sends the set X to the quotient set X modulo tilde. The definition of this map is very simple. It just takes an element X and sends it to the corresponding equivalence class. Therefore, this map is often called the canonical projection. Here, one important thing you should note is that this is indeed a subjective map. 
Okay, and now we are ready to define open sets here on the right hand side. For this, it's a good thing to visualize the set X on the left hand side as a rectangle. And now when we take a point X from the set, the equivalence class should be the whole vertical line here. In other words, here in our picture, we decompose the rectangle into vertical lines. We do this because then we can visualize X modulo tilde as a line. This is not hard to see, because to get all equivalence classes, you just need one horizontal stripe here. Therefore, the map Q just collapses all the vertical lines here. Okay, now please recall, here on the left hand side, we know what open sets are. For example, this subset here is an open set when it lies in T. However, here on the right hand side, open does not make sense yet. Hence, we need a suitable definition for open sets here in our quotient set. This means that in some sense this should be compatible to the openness in the original set X here on the left hand side. And now you might already guess that this should work with the map Q. Indeed, this is not hard at all. When we start with a subset U here on the right hand side, we can look at the pre image on the left hand side. Hence, we can just define openness on the right hand side with the help of the pre images. Here, in our visualization, the pre image of U would look like this. For denoting the pre image, I write Q to the power minus 1 and also use brackets. And now this pre image of U under Q should be an open set in X. And in this case, U on the right hand side is also called open. Of course, with this you know we have defined a new topology and maybe for the moment let's call it T hat. In other words, U is in T hat if the pre image is in the original T. Indeed, what we have to do is to check that all the properties of a topology are fulfilled here. However, it's not hard to verify the three properties. This is simply because the pre-image operator acts very nicely with intersections and unions. Hence, the result is, in a natural way, we get a topology on our quotient set. And it's simply called the quotient topology. Okay, how we can use this whole quotient space, I can show you with the Möbius trip. This is a very nice example you often see in a topology course. The starting point is again a rectangle, but now the equivalence relation is much easier. Here you should see x as the Cartesian product with the closed interval 0, 1 and the open interval minus 1, 1. In other words, the x axis is here in the middle. And now what we want to do is to clue the left hand side to the right hand side, but with a twist. More precisely, this cluing means that we take this part and clue it to this part. And similarly, we do it with the other part here. Hence, there we have our twist and what comes out is the Möbius strip. Now, as you can see, this strip here is not so easy to visualize because it lives in the space instead of the plane. However, this also means that you can do it yourself just with a piece of paper. Okay, so the important thing here is that we find the red and the green line here again. Moreover, you should see, we've poured the colors together. Of course, this is exactly what we wanted to do. However, formally we have to do this with the correct equivalence relation. In fact, this is not hard to define, we just look at points 0, S. So you see, these are the points here on the left boundary. And now they should be equivalent to some points on the right boundary. So this would be 1, comma, minus s. So you see, the minus sign does exactly what we want. It flips the point from the bottom part to the top and vice versa. Hence, this point is identified with this point. And this is exactly what gluing is. Okay, then the next thing we can talk about concerns open sets on the Möbius strip. For example, I can ask you, is this set here open? To answer this, you have to look at the pre-image under the map Q. This means here in the pre-image we find one part here and the other part here. 
Therefore, this set here is open if the two parts here are open in the original topology. And of course, here in X, we take the standard topology, which is defined with the Euclidean metric. Okay, with this, you now have a very concrete example of a quotient space. And the next example I want to show you is the projective space, which is also defined using a quotient topology. However, I would say we do this in the next video. Therefore, I hope I see you there and have a nice day. Bye.